Hello. This tutorial is to tell you about how I use keyless motion capture in my No Surrender music video. There are a few people that make motion capture software, but this tutorial is about iPodsoft. Their software comes in two parts. The recorder, which is self-explanatory and free, and the studio, where you can adjust and process all the captured data you've taken. Here you can change and neaten up all the movement, but if you get the capture right to begin with, then it's going to save you hours. There are a few different camera setups you can use, but this tutorial is about how to use two Microsoft Connect sensors, and these work from your heat signature. There are two versions of the Connect available. This older type, which is the Connect 360, the system one I'm using, but there is a newer one, which is the Connect 1. This is really important. You have to have enough USB controllers. The Connect sensors produce loads of data, and you need to make sure that your hardware can cope with it. All computers come with one USB controller, which is fine for two Connect 360s. However, the newer Connect 1 needs a controller for each. So be warned that if you use two Connect 1 sensors, then you will need two USB controllers. You can link two laptops together using one as a slave, or if you have a desktop, you will need to put in another controller card. You can get 360s on the internet reasonably cheaply because in gaming terms, there are the old technology. If you use one connect, it's really good at detecting movements like this because there are very few possible confusion points. It struggles to see this because there is no clarity between the different body parts, but it just can't cope with this because it has no idea what one heat source is doing behind the other heat source. It can all be cleaned up in the studio part of the software, but this takes time and can be really frustrating. The way around this is to use two connects, which are set up to work together. When I first went on a course that introduced this software, the bloke showing us said it was too difficult to calibrate two cameras together. The best description of him is a boonhead, because it's really easy. I've seen on YouTube lots of different layouts, most with the cameras virtually in line, but with these the actor still has a blind side. The best that I've found is that to have two cameras directly facing each other, it makes sense really. At virtually no point is any part of your actor not seen by at least one camera. You can just rest the sensors on something, but in order to get them in the right place, it's a lot easier securing them to some kind of lighting stand or a tripod. You can just tape them on, but what I did was use a 3D printer to make a bracket like this. You can download the STLG code from Thingiverse. The potential downside is that this increases distances and places your cameras further away from each other and maybe the computer. A standard USB cable has a maximum working length of 3 meters. You can get around this by using active USB cables. These have a built-in self-powering facility. Again, these are easy to get hold of on the internet. Because this was meant to look like a live music performance, my guitar playing characters needed to keep their arms coordinated in line. I could use a real guitar, but this would block the heat signature. So with some fencing wire and a pair of pliers, I made a wireframe guitar prop that I could use to keep all the body parts reacting in the correct way, but it wouldn't block anything. The only other real problems are, you must have big enough space to set up in, and you need to avoid direct sunlight. Once you've got all your cameras set up and connected, 
When you open the recorder, it should look a bit like this. You might see other things as well, like I can see the webcam on my laptop. The important thing is that you can see both connect sensors. If you can't, try unplugging them, swearing a lot, and then reconnecting them. Click on each of the two connects to highlight them. That means you're ready to proceed, so click on the record video button. The first thing that you need to do is line the cams up correctly. If you walk into the centre of your cameras, you can look to see if all your limbs can be seen by both connects. If the cameras are at the wrong angles, don't try adjusting the degree of tilt by hand. Put your mouse over the image from the camera that you want to adjust and the movement box will pop up. Your sensors have an inbuilt motor to adjust the degree of tilt and you can change it using the slider in this box. This creates your performance area and you can put a mark like a piece of masking tape on the floor so it's easy to navigate to. It's worth spending time making sure this is accurate. If your arms are not reaching straight up, then being able to see the floor is better than being able to see the space that will be unused above your subject. The next step is to evaluate the background. Click on the background tab. Evaluating the background makes a note of all the items that don't move so they can be ignored later. Try to get away from the camera's views, but if you can't, be sure to be still. Now comes the calibration that Mr. Boonhead thought was so difficult. Click the record tab. To do this, you will need a high-tech device, such as a piece of cardboard, or I'm using a piece of plywood. The important thing is that it must have pointy corners because that's the bit that gets tracked. In the recorder, you can set a time delay that gives you time to be in position before the filming starts. There, you can see it counting down. All you have to do is wave the board between the two devices, backwards, forwards, up, down, left, right. Just make sure you don't cover up or block the corners, and it should work fine. And when you've finished, just push the stop recording button. When you click stop recording, a box will pop up asking you what you want to do with your recording. Click on the studio icon. Here, we can make a calibration video that refers to your exact camera setup. You can use it with all the capture videos that you do until you move the cameras. If you do move the cameras at all, let's say that you nudge one of the stands, don't think that it's kind of in the right place and it doesn't really matter, because it does. It only takes a few minutes to do a new calibration video, otherwise you will end up having to redo all the performances again when the first lot don't work. When it opens, this box will pop up asking you what you want to do with your film. Make sure that the calibration project window is ticked and then click on the finish button. First thing that you must do is set out your region of interest. Directly below your film is the timeline. You can grab this arrow and drag it to a point where you are happy to start at. If you move it to the right you can see your film moves from frame to frame. Find the one where the board is in the position that you want to start tracking from. Then you can click on the end of the thick grey line, which represents the footage, and drag it to match the timeline arrow. You can then do the same thing, but in reverse, to set the end point, and then click on Calibrate from Board button. This will take a few moments, but you can watch the magical tracking process. You can toggle through the different camera views by clicking here, and note that the more yellow dots you have, 
the better your final score will be. Ah, it's finished tracking. Just some final calculations and there you go. Alright, the final grade is good. You can get perfect, but good is fine. If you don't get a good grade, do it again. Click on File, Save As. It will automatically give you a timestamp and pick the file type as a calibration file. All you really need to know is where it's going to put it. So click Save, and then you can close the studio element. This will automatically take you back to the recorder because you didn't close it. Click on the close button of the file menu box and you're ready for your performance. In the next tutorial, we'll be capturing me jumping around like an idiot, then seeing how to process that footage in the studio section. You can find out how to save it as an FBX, so then you have a mocap file that you can use in Maya, 3D Studio Max, or something like that. I welcome any comments, and will try to answer any questions. If you've been entertained, then please subscribe by clicking here, and thank you for watching.